Right, if you're looking to improve your power on the bike, then it's worth considering adding some specific strength exercises to your training routine. After all, cycling is not just about aerobic fitness. It requires repeated force production through the pedals, particularly for time trialing. So today I'm going to be running you through four strength exercises that will help to improve your power on the bike. And don't worry, it does get a lot easier with time. So uh, Mark, should we add some weight now? I think we're all right this week, maybe, maybe next week. I know what you're thinking, Mark, is looking pretty hench, but I don't want to get too big for triathlon. But we don't need to worry because we are not going to be throwing insane weights around today. This is more about building lean muscle, activating those muscles better, and therefore improving our power on the bike. So the first exercise we're going to be running through today is the bridge. Right, so this exercise doesn't actually necessarily require weight and it can actually be performed at your own home. And it's actually a really good warm up for some of the following exercises. It gets the muscles working and activating correctly. So to perform this, you need to lay on your back on the floor, bend your knees and put your feet flat on the ground, just close enough that you can graze your heels with your fingertips when you stretch your arms out down by your side. Your feet should also be about hip width apart. Also, bend your elbows to 90 degrees so that only your upper arm is on the ground. Then drive up through your heels and your upper back to lift your glutes off the ground. Drive your hips up as high as possible, squeezing the glutes hard. Keeping your belly button drawn in so that you don't curve through your back. Now really focus on driving straight up and make sure that your knees aren't falling in. So you should feel this exercise through your glutes and your hamstrings rather than your lower back. So really make sure that you take your time with it and then actually hold it at the top so you really feel your glutes activate. And do 15 reps three times through and that should do the trick. But to do a nice progression from this, you can do the single leg glute bridge. So for this, just set up in the same way as you did for the glute bridge and then raise one leg up off the ground. You can bend the raised leg to 90 degrees or point the toe up towards the ceiling. Just make sure not to swing the raised leg as you lift. Again, just drive up through your heel and upper back, lifting your hips as high as you can. Now for the deadlift, and this can be performed with dumbbells or a barbell like I have here. It focuses heavily on the quads, the hamstrings, the knees, and the hips, all whilst increasing flexibility and movement. And today I'm gonna to be demonstrating it with the barbell, but if you are using dumbbells, then it's the same movement, but you just hold the dumbbells down by your side with your palms facing backwards. But now let's run you through with the barbell. So your feet should be spaced hip width apart with your grip just outside of your legs. There are a few grip variations out there, but I'm gonna go with the standard overhand grip as I'm showing here. It's important you keep your back flat with your neutral spine from start to finish through this movement. Your shoulders should be held back and strong whilst keeping your eyes forward and chest lifted. As you go for the lift, the bar should remain more or less in contact with your legs for the entire range of motion. Your hips and knees should move together to transfer the bar from the ground to the upper thigh locked position. Then to return the weight back to the floor, hinge at the hips and lower, allowing your knees to bend slightly. Keep the weight close to your body and lower until your upper body is almost parallel to the floor. Then when the weight touches the floor, reset and start again. It's really important that you don't start with too heavy a weight on this exercise. In fact, if you're only starting out doing deadlifts or you haven't done them in a while, then it's worth actually just starting with a barbell alone without any weights on the end. Then as you progress, you can just add five to 10 kilos at a time on each end. And we're aiming to do 12 reps three times through. So your weight on either end should reflect that duration. Okay, this one is one of my favorites, the Bulgarian split squat. It even sounds like it means business. It works everything, legs, core, balance, and most importantly, it focuses on driving off one leg at a time. So all you need for this is a step, a bench, or any other contraption that you can rest your rear leg on or your rear foot on, and that needs to be around knee height, like this bench here. And then with a little weight in either hand, I'm gonna perform the Bulgarian split squat. So get into a forward lunge position with your torso upright, core braced and hips squared to your body with your back foot elevated onto the bench. 
Now lower until your front thigh is almost horizontal, keeping your knee in line with your foot. Don't let your front knee travel beyond your toes though. Drive up through your front heel back to the starting position. Reset and then go again. Now you will need to experiment a little to find that correct distance for the lead leg in relation to your back leg and the bench. But the main focus is making sure that your knee is over your foot and not beyond your foot when you're at the bottom of the movement. Then you want to do 12 reps on either leg three times through. Right, this next exercise is great for those often overlooked core muscles and oblique muscles. It is the Russian twist. Now we do quite often get a little bit lazy on the bike through our core muscles, when actually our core muscles play a very big part. They help to hold us better and improve our posture when we're on the bike, and therefore taking the strain off of our backs and also helping to improve our power on the bike. So for this exercise, start by sitting on the floor with your knees bent and feet flat on the ground. Then lean back so that your upper body is at around a 45 degree angle to the floor. Make sure that you keep your back straight at this angle throughout the exercise as it will be tempting to hunch your shoulders forward. Then link your hands together in front of your chest, brace your core and raise your legs up off the ground. Now rotate your arms all the way over to one side and then do the same in the other direction. Count that as one rep and then aim for 20 in total. Then repeat it three times through with a slight break in between. Now, if the Russian twists are proving too difficult, then you can, of course, not lift your feet up off the floor. So just keep them planted down onto the floor throughout the exercise. Or if you want to make it harder for yourself, why not add a little bit of weight to your hands? So you can either hold a dumbbell in either hand throughout the exercise or use something like a medicine ball like I have here. As with anything new, make sure we build these exercises up gradually over time. So that means building up the amount of weight that we're using and the number of reps that we're using very gradually. And whilst this video has been focusing on improving our power on the bike, all of these exercises actually are gonna help to strengthen the muscles, they're gonna help our movement, our range of movement, and how we hold our posture. And ultimately, that is all gonna help improve our injury prevention. Now, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And on the subject of improving our power on the bike and trying to go faster, how about going and checking out our Cycle Faster for free video with time trial specialist Matthew Botchell by clicking just down here. And if you'd like to see our strength training session on the bike with pro triathlete Will Clark, just click down here.